Good evening and welcome back to CNN Money Switzerland. I'm Olivia Chang. It's time to bring you all the latest headlines today. The Swiss Economic Office has laid out new projections for the country from coronavirus. GDP is expected to drop by 6.2% for the year, with overall average unemployment of about 3.8%. SECO is calling it, quote, the lowest economic slump since 1975. This is, however, slightly better than their original forecast back in April, with restrictions being loosened faster than expected and the number of COVID-19 cases falling quickly across the country. SECO, meanwhile, is forecasting a moderate recovery for Switzerland in 2021, provided there isn't any flare-up, with the GDP to grow by 4.9%. IMD has released its annual world competitiveness rankings and once again Singapore has topped the list. Switzerland came in third and has been steadily moving up the ladder over the recent years. This has been credited to factors such as its health and education system, government efficiency and infrastructure. Not so attractive, it's cost competitiveness. And it's a confectionery that's dividing Switzerland. Moronkov is at the center of a debate over its name and whether it's racist. Here's a closer look. If they say modern cop, then it's something very positive. So there is no reason to change it. We have to change the other thing. We have to change people's brains. And we know it's very difficult. That's using a word in a, in, for something excellent, it doesn't hurt. If they take me, you know, once in a while for a bad example, which I <laughs> definitely are not, but if I have to uh, defend myself, it is good, then we talk about it. The first and biggest and natural thing would be pay fair prices to cocoa, coffee, all the stuff we have from Africa. Pay fair wages and that's not very comfortable for us. Tourism is slowly getting back on the cards with many European countries loosening their border controls as well as restrictions, Switzerland included. So what could a potential summer holiday look like? Well, in Spain, beachgoers will have to reserve their spots in the sand. Some beaches are set to be divided up and vacationers will have to book a space via an app. CNN's Adika Schuber reports from Mallorca in Spain. If you're dreaming of a beach holiday, coastal towns across Spain have been working overtime to prove they can keep visitors safe, but it won't be as simple as laying out your beach blanket. In Canat de Berengur on Spain's Mediterranean coast, a grid is being laid in the sand to allot nine square meter spaces for visitors. Beachgoers will need to book space on an app to get access with appointed arrival times. The mayor says the new normality brings new beaches. We will adapt. We will try to enjoy it in the best possible way, he says. In San Shesho, on the Atlantic coast, the mayor plans to reopen with a similar grid system and a maximum capacity of 2,300 beachgoers a day. That's less than 75 percent of previous summers. He says it's a plan that will keep the safety distance between people who come to enjoy the beach. 
At all Spanish beaches, changing rooms and bathrooms will be subject to strict disinfection with limited capacity. Sun loungers and parasols will need to be cleaned at regular intervals and kept at least two meters apart. For locals, the new rules will be worth it if it can help to revive the summer economy. Eh, bueno, yo pienso que... It depends on how many people come to the beach, this man tells us. If it continues as it is now, only for residents, it wouldn't be necessary. But if tourists come and people from abroad, I think it would be a good idea. And the prime minister says he wants to make Spain the safest holiday destination in Europe, which is why the country is only gradually lifting those coronavirus restrictions. The idea is to make guaranteed health and safety as much of a selling point as Spain's sun, sea, and sand. Atika Schubert, CNN, Mallorca, Spain. And with a notably lower coronavirus death toll and infection rate than many in Europe, Portugal is now trying to market itself as a safe option for tourists. Its new campaign includes hygiene seals for businesses serving tourists and the idea of a so-called green corridor to the UK. CNN's Fred Plyton has more in this exclusive report. Even in these times of pandemic, Lisbon's most famous bakery, Pastéis de Belém, is still churning out cream cakes. But owner Miguel Clarinha says his business has been hit hard by the lack of tourists, and he doesn't think that will change soon. We're hopeful, of course, but uh, we also know that 20, this year is going to be a very, very slow year, even with the, the borders opening up. Even as many European countries are lifting travel warnings, only a few tourists can be seen in Lisbon's historic old town. In free areas, it's not, not very dangerous, only in small spaces, yeah? in, in rooms or something. Yeah? And so uh, we are not scared about that. Among European nations, Portugal is one of the most dependent on tourism. The country is now launching a campaign to win travelers back. I caught up with the Prime Minister just as he unveiled the program. What is Portugal's strategy to try and bring tourism back to this country in a safe way? We've created protocols between the health authorities, all the hotels, to create a special seal, clean and safe, to give everyone guarantees that they can come and they'll be safe. Portugal is viewed as having dealt successfully with the pandemic so far. Having shut down early, the COVID-19 death toll here remains low. And anti-coronavirus measures remain on prominent display, like temperature checks at the airports for all those arriving. The Prime Minister says he believes Portugal's track record will help the country beat out other nations in the quest to lure wary tourists. We're among the countries that tested the most, one of the countries that better knows the real spread of the virus, where the numbers are the safest and where people can come with confidence. And confidence will be one of the differentiating factors at the moment of choosing where to go on holidays. There, I think, Portugal is a good destination. Portugal's economy has been hit extremely hard by the coronavirus pandemic. Now the country is battling to come back, making reviving its tourism sector a top national priority. Fred Plaikin, CNN, Lisbon, Portugal. We finish up with a quick look at some sports news. A new class of high-performance boats is popping up on Lake Geneva. Our sports correspondent Matt Layton has all the details. If you look out at Lake Geneva in the next few weeks, you may well see some very fast flying catamarans. Six brand new TF-35 foiling boats have just been delivered to the port of Mie, 10 kilometers from Geneva, and are going to be put through their paces. I caught up with real-time team helmsman Jerome Clark for his initial thoughts. So, yeah, we're enjoying because we, we launched the boat. Uh, we because of the crisis, COVID crisis, we, we, we lose some time, uh, but uh, it was an uh, effective time because we, we could uh, prepare very well the boat. And uh, as you see, it's a brand new boat with a new electronical system, new foil, so a lot to do. So yeah, we're happy, looking forward to sail. Automatic flight assistant designer Luc Dubois sets the scene for the expectations of the teams. Yeah, oh, all the teams are, are pretty much here now. Uh, all the boats have, uh, have arrived uh, around the, the Geneva area. 
And uh, the, the goal, you know, since we're not going to have a racing, at least not racing first part of the season, uh, people are mainly going to uh, work on reliability, uh, you know, discovering their boat uh, and, and starting to, to practice, uh, probably starting to mix a little bit, even though there won't be any official racing. There, there will be uh, definitely some lineup and uh, everybody's eager to, uh, to find out, you know, how they perform and, uh, and uh, create a little bit that racing environment one way or the other. The baits are very high tech. Luc Dubois. It's a 35 footer uh, catamaran, big mast, tall mast, uh, 20 meter, 21 meter above the water, uh, big sail area. So that's uh, definitely targeting light air. Um, the idea is that it can start foiling off the water with 13 knots of boat speed, 13 and a half knots of boat speed. So, you know, you can create that probably by, with six knots of wind, six, six and a half knots of wind. And um, after that, since it's a light air, it's targeting light air, the, the top speed won't be impressive, but you know, you'll still get to 35 knots, which is uh, uh, pretty impressive anyhow. The main foil, which, uh, you know, does all the job, like, like the main wings of a plane, uh, 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 you have only one in the water at, at the time, so uh, you, use, you use only one. But then the, the rudder, like what we call the elevator, uh, it's like having two tails in a plane uh, that, uh, that we, we, we keep them both in the water all the time. So you have three, uh, three foils to control. Uh, let's say that the main foil is mainly about the, your right height. Uh, how far off the water you want to foil and then trying to keep that boat in a proper pitch attitude or trim attitude is, is, a, is a good job for the rudders. The boats are designed to be able to be helmed by their keen amateur owners. The, yes, the goal is to um, is definitely to um, take a little bit of the difficult part uh, away since the you know, this is a, a pro-am uh, circuit, let's say, and, and uh, you know, people don't have as much time to practice as uh, you would find in, in the America's Cup or in the Olympic classes. So uh, for this boat, we've, uh, we've uh, developed a software that manages the, all the foils. So all the, you know, the hydro part is uh, being taken care of by, uh, by a software. It still leaves uh, a lot to do with the, the steering of the boat, with the trimming of the sail. Uh, so uh, we're trying to make it a little bit easier, a little bit more you know, easy to, to enter into the foiling world. Uh, but uh, uh, I hope we'll, uh, we'll succeed in that. On the 3rd of July, all the owners in the association will come together to decide the future schedule of the class and the possible competitions this year. A couple of regattas in September are already being talked about. Remember, you can catch up with any of our content simply by heading over to cnnmoney.ch for all of our latest interviews. In the meantime, take care. We'll see you very shortly. Good evening.